going on, everybody? Uh, we're freaking back. It's another episode of The Playwrights. I'm Will. And I'm Sarah. This is our little podcast. About big plays. It does feel good uh, to be back in the saddle, and I feel like we say that every time we start a new episode, because <laughs> we've got so many breaks between I our know, episodes lately. But it's just been like an insane like yeah. spring, summer time. When was our last episode? My gosh, it was Romeo and Juliet? And- yeah. It was about a, it was a month ago, maybe a sure. month and a half. Sure. But I'm so happy to be back with Picnic, which thank you guys for guessing, playing along. Yeah, that was fun. The little Insta fun. party was a good time. Yeah. Um, but we just wanted to say sorry that we've been gone. I am, you know, we're buying a house. Yeah, we're buying a house. We're <laughs> so we're know, trying to figure that all out. It's summertime. Slash, it's we like, were house hunting. Yeah. yeah, and we, you know, we go through existential crises every time we put out an episode because we're like, "What? Like, is this even real?" You, you do. I'm oh, like, I do. Yeah, it's a fun time. I oh, know I have a fun time every time we do it. <laughs> it's just a lot of build up to it. It is. But um, but yeah. yeah. So are how's you enjoying it, how your, are your sum- summers? <laughs> I was about to ask you, are you enjoying your summer so far, Sarah? Um, I don't even know, but it's mostly because I'm like working. This is the first summer of my life that I have, like, a full-time job that I had, like, in the winter and spring. Yeah, not like a special summer job. Right. So it doesn't feel, like, any different, and it kind of sucks. Thank God it's going to be over soon, and I'm going to be a uh, teacher at St. James, their drama teacher and director there, starting in the fall. So that's, like... Really exciting. It's yeah. just kind of waiting for that to happen. I feel like I'm in this like this this limbo this, area. Yeah. yeah. And the same thing with the house. It's like my it's gosh. It's uncomfy. Yeah. My gosh. It's like we don't get to move in till whatever the beginning of July, and it's like right. Oh well. But we went to the Black Hills, and that was fun. Oh my gosh, it was beautiful. Yeah. I feel like we there should be a that. play set in the Black Hills. Something about like something about like a liberal person and going to the Black Hills and being Finding like themselves. and find. find or maybe saying like mm, maybe this maybe I shouldn't be a conservative person. Or maybe it's the right decision that I've been like this. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. And I'm just spitballing. Maybe I'm just spitballing here. Exit and pursuit by a bear. Could by be. a bear. By bear country. By yeah. Yeah. Um, um, or and maybe like maybe there's a maybe there's a scene kind of like a kind of like a lucid dream scene where the where the founding fathers stone faces start talking to the character mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah that's definitely think, necessary have they ever done that in in a in a movie or i feel a like play? they definitely have or at least in a cartoon in a cartoon like but i'm like i'm like I'm, I'm looking for like a person <laughs> actually goes to mount rushmore and the stone faces talk to him I'm looking for that as well i'm looking for it i want it yeah all right and if you put it in a movie just give me credit where credit is due all right well, we also went to Michigan. We did. We did. My gosh. And we, we, we are Mackinac here. Mackinac Island. Mackinac Island. Like, it was please fun. go there before you die. It's gorgeous. And it feels like Europe in the United States. And bike around. You won't regret it. It was powerful. I didn't regret it. It was like eight miles. And I was like, I barely broke a sweat. Yeah. It was, it was amazing. Was, it was also yeah. kind of cold, but it was amazing. Yeah. 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 I wasn't that bad. No. Did I wear a sweater the whole time? Sure. 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 You know what? That's but not what while we, we were biking. It was lovely. Yeah, I bike. I I, I, wrote, I had a sweater while biking. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, William, how's your summer? I'm having a real hot boy summer. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. I <laughs> um, <laughs> I am living life. Um, you know, hanging out by the pool. Although I haven't been there in actually a couple of weeks, which stinks. Um, but yeah, I don't. You know, I I get to. I'm like, really. Um, I feel like taking full advantage of summer. Um, I'm trying to pack up the house. You know, I'm doing a little, I got a little side hustle going, but other than that, I'm just like, I'm chilling. Yeah, hire Will for all your rover needs if you're in the KC yeah. area. Yeah, you know, you know, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to plug myself like I've got one side hustle and I'm plugging myself for my other side hustle. But we love Is this puppies. podcast a side hustle? I don't. Think I don't know. I think it's like a hobby. It's a hobby, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um. Well, lovely. Well, should we jump into it? Should we jump into this little play called A Picnic by William Inge? William Motter Inge. Motter? Motter. Hardly know her. Mo- <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it was probably his mother who... Mother, his mother's maiden name, perhaps? Yes. Um. So the play we're covering today is obviously Picnic. Uh, it won the Pulitzer Prize for Drama in 1953. And it also won the New York Drama Critics Circle Award for Best Play the same year. But 
Who is William Mataringe? Let me tell you. He's a Taurus. All right. A Taurus? A Taurus. Oh, oh, I thought you meant like a, oh, I see. That's a sign. That's a sign. Um, what does that mean? And I think Stephanie's a Taurus too. I actually don't know that much about Tauruses. I'm going to be honest with you, but the, one of my signs is a Taurus. So That's the bull, right? Yeah. So I'm rising Virgo. Uh, my, no, sun sign is Virgo. Rising is Leo. And then the moon sign is Taurus for me. So I think there's like a little bit of headstrong. Uh, yeah, you, it's, I feel like I feel like a bull. Yeah. Well, does the does the animal really have anything to do Has with the sign do. itself? Well, not all of them are animals. Like Virgo's a maiden. Really? Yeah. Oh, I thought they were all animals. I think you're a lion, maybe, but I can't. Leo's remember. definitely a lion. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyways, he was born May third, nineteen thirteen, and he died June tenth, nineteen seventy three. Fun fact about his death date, that's our proposal anniversary date, which we used which that we photo. Used as the poster. And we didn't even know it. And we were kind of celebrating the death of William Inge. <laughs> no. Oh. Um, that was not purposeful. I love William Inge. <laughs> um, now, he is, uh, he usually writes plays about small time, oh, small town life portraits and settings that are rooted in the American heartland. So he's actually known as the playwright of the Midwest. He was born in Independence, Missouri. He is Independence, Kansas. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, Independence, Kansas. It's Ooh. confusing because there's an Independence, Missouri that I'm much more familiar yeah. with, um, which is way more popular than Independence. They Kansas. love their independence both in Missouri and Kansas. Yeah, well, they love sharing a lot of city names. I'll tell you what. Um, but he's the fifth child of Maud and Luther. I just love his parents' names. Um, he attended. Independence Community College and graduated from the University of Kansas which about with a bachelor in arts and speech and drama. He was a frat guy at Sigma Nu um, and he was going to pursue his master's at George Peabody College for teachers in Nashville but he dropped out. Why is that? Um, I don't know. He you was know like what? I'm a good playwright I don't need to teach people. Well yeah I don't know if there was like some crises like I don't really I miss Kansas. I don't know if I should be here. Is the col is like the theatrical college at KU named for William Inge at all? Is there a building named after yeah, William Inge? Yeah, I think Inge? yeah, I think there's an, an, a is it center. Like the William Inge Center yeah. for playwriting or whatever. Yeah, well, there. Yeah, we'll get into it during his legacy. Um, but he went back to Kansas after he dropped out of grad school, and he worked as a laborer on state highways and as a Wichita news announcer. I was born in Wichita. Did you ever hear him on the news? Yeah. You did? <laughs> Way back in the 30s. In the 30s. <laughs> yeah. Um, but from 1937 to 1938, he taught English and drama at the Cherokee County Community High School in Columbus, Kansas. So really, he was just working all over Kansas. So really, he's kind of like us. He's like teaching yeah. high school drama. Yeah. Wow. So there's still hope. There's still hope. I know. We could be Pulitzer Prize winning playwrights. We don't even know it. We're not dead yet. Not dead. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. He returned and completed his master's at Peabody. So he, he didn't give up forever. He was just like, this isn't the right time for my master's right now. He went back. You know what? I want to be a master that. teacher. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Um, and then he taught at Stevens College in Columbia, Missouri. So he became a little bit of a Missouri boy. Um, and then this is where kind of his drama career kind of starts off so he began as a drama critic at the st louis star times in 1943 oh okay um and with tennessee williams encouragement he wrote his first play <gasps> okay farther off from heaven so they did know each other they did i meant to look into more about their friendship or how they met but i don't know if the playwriting scene probably wasn't like that huge you know so if you're kind of well, interested tennessee's from missouri isn't he Oh, that's right. Good job, Will. Thanks. Yeah, he, he is. He is. He, he is. went to Mizzou. Oh my gosh, we have some great playwrights from Didn't American he? playwrights here. I'll yeah. have to look it up. Yeah, but yeah, but whatever. Yeah, no, um, I think he yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. So it makes sense that they would have known each other, I guess. Yeah. Um, as a teacher at Washington University in St. Louis, he wrote "Come Back, Little Sheba." Great. So, yeah, while he was teaching, side hustle, one of the greatest plays um, in you know. 
The American Canon. Yeah, the American Canon. Um, and he actually struggled with alcoholism himself, which is the main conflict of the play. Mm. Um, and he joined AA while he was writing it and met his wife, Lola, which is what... That's what her That's what the name wife's is. name is. So it's based off oh, of like, their based, relationship. Oh, it's semi-autobiographical. Right? Yeah. Um, it's probably more sad. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> Hopefully his <laughs> wife wasn't so. that sad. No. Oh, my gosh. Well, that's so... Okay, anyways, that's weird because we'll get into more of it later. But he ran it ran on Broadway for 190 performances in 1950. And when, you know, he was like, if it takes off on Broadway, I guess I'm leaving St. Louis. And he did. He left for the Big Apple. Um, so in 1953, Inge received the Pulitzer Prize for Picnic, uh, a play based on a woman he had known as a small child. So this is what he says about it. When I was a boy in Kansas, my mother had a boarding house. There were three women school teachers living in the house. I was four years old and they were nice to me. I liked them. I saw their attempts and even as a child, I sensed every woman's failure. I began to sense the sorrow and the emptiness in their lives and it touched me. I was like, it's really, dang. Yeah, yeah, at four years old. I know. <laughs> Jeez. I know. Like he was just like he was just like, oh Irma and Christine and Rosemary, you just my gosh, you guys are you, <laughs> you guys women are, are you sad. women are pathetic. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm gonna go play with my trucks. Yeah. In the driveway. I don't know, but it's it is cool where where I mean you'll see, but he he writes about what he knows. He like observes people, um and experiences that he has. It's not some like imagine I mean of course he has like imagination, but he he stems from real life experiences. All of his plays do. Sure. Come from him. Sure. Um if you want to read any of his other plays, there is Bus Stop, Natural Affection, A Loss of Roses, The Dark at the Top of the Stairs, The Last Pad and Summer Brave. Now, Summer Brave is actually a reworking of right. Picnic. Right. And he changes the ending. Yeah. So this is what he says about that. Okay. We love a good William Inge quote. We should talk about the ending definitely when we look at the plot and stuff. Yeah, yeah for yeah, sure. Yeah. So if you want to leave, yeah. Yeah. Um, he'd said, it would be fair to say that Summer Brave is the original version of Picnic. I had written before that what? I... What? <laughs> How is it the original version of Picnic I know. when it's not? William, wait for the quote. Okay. I have written <laughs> before that I never completed... Uh, oh, I never completely fulfilled my original intentions in writing Picnic before we went into production in 1953, and that I wrote what some considered a fortuitous ending in order to have finished pl- to have a finished play to go into rehearsal. A couple of years after Picnic had closed on Broadway, after the film version had made its success, I got the early version out of my files and began to rework it, just for my own satisfaction. Summer Brave is the result. I admit that I prefer it to the version of the play that was produced, but I don't necessarily expect others to agree. Summer Brave might not have enjoyed any success on Broadway whatever, nor won any of the prizes that were bestowed upon Picnic, but I feel that it is more humorously true than Picnic, and it does fulfill my original intentions. Hmm. I was like, that's an... I I've literally had never heard of Summer Brave. Oh. Well, and and the other funny thing is that he, uh, that picnic is actually based off of a, sh- a one act that he wrote called Front Porch, mm. and so he went back to that, and it was about and Front Porch was only, it was five women characters, and I think it was you know it was probably the main five. Can in, I just in, say that I love that he writes for women? It's kind of revolutionary. That's what I was among, thinking. Oh, yeah, My God, yeah, yeah, no, I, I seriously the yeah. the the women characters in Picnic are super good, incredible. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the men certainly take a back seat, I think. Yeah, well, they kind of suck. Um, but he... But we'll go back to more of Summer Brave, different endings later. Yeah, but yeah. Um, he also wrote for television and film as well. Uh, if you want to watch some of them, one is called Splendor in the Grass. It earned him an Academy Award, and he actually made his film debut in it. Um the other two, All Fall Down and Bus Riley's uh, Back in Town, are some other movies. However, Bus Riley, he wrote it, but he was unhappy with the changes made to his screenplay, like, after he wrote it. Okay. That he insisted that the writing credit on the film goes to Walter Gage because he didn't he want like, his name on that product. He was like, this isn't mine. Yeah. 
Yeah, he's Jeez, like, no. I wonder what they changed. I know to be like that devastating. Yeah, it's like I don't even want. I don't even want a uh, like a, a like a second credit or anything. No. Based on the screen, whatever. Yeah. Interesting. Well, he was also a script su- supervisor in the '60s on ABC's Bus Stop TV series, and the six. I've never read Bus Stop. It's very good. I did a set design for it in okay. set design class. <laughs> no way. <laughs> um. Yeah. Cool. I think. I don't want to say it was like a Marilyn Monroe type if not Marilyn Monroe was in it. Interesting. I have to look it up. But the sixth episode of Bus Stop, this TV series, is basically a condensed version of his play, which is funny to me. Um, Because I just thought the whole series was kind of the play, but it's not. It's a condensed version. It's like like a mini series. Well, no. I'm saying only the sixth episode is... Like his play. Oh, oh, oh. But they yeah. took the concept and, and... Right. Okay, I see. Yeah. Um, in 1963, he met with CBS and he was like, Hey guys, can I um, film a one-hour television drama about a family in a Midwestern town called All Over Town? And they were like, uh, no. Why would he call I, it yeah. All of, Why would he call it All Over Town? Was there a guy named Oliver in it? Um, so that didn't work out, but <laughs> um, William Inge decided to write a play called Out on the Outskirts of Town, and it was actually performed on the Bob Hope special for two years in a row, which Great. is kind of cool. I guess. Bob Hope, an he's American very, icon. He's very famous. He is very famous. One of the most famous people. I saw a waxed uh, statue of him once. Oh. Weird times. Was that in Branson, Missouri? Maybe. Probably. <laughs> Ugh. Um, he also wrote two novels, if you're into books. Um, Good Night, Miss Wyk- Wyckoff, and My Son is a Splendid Driver. And they were both set in Freedom, Kansas, which is hashtag a fictional town. Freedom, Kansas does not exist. But the hashtag does. But the hash- yeah. I just made it up. TM. Interesting that he it. just like took his hometown, which is Independence. is like, oh, I'll just call it Freedom. The Freedom. And that they're both set there. Is it I, all I taking he, place in the same universe? I think so, probably. I don't know for sure. But um, during the early 70s, Inge lived in Los Angeles where he taught playwriting at the University of California, Irvine. So he really was just making his way across the country. Um, his last several plays, however, attracted little notice or critical acclaim, and he fell into a deep depression, and con- he was convinced that he would never be able to write well ever again. Um, so he died... Uh, of suicide by carbon monoxide <gasps> poisoning on no June tenth, nineteen seventy three, at his Hollywood home, what he shared with his sister Helene. No, I know a literal, almost the very death of a salesman. Well, I mean, that's just how he dies in Death of a Salesman. I don't know. <laughs> you can just be well, because he wow. sees himself as a failure. Is that what you're comparing? Mm, yeah, I mean, it's poetic. Yeah. Um, I wonder if he knew Arthur Miller. He probably, I mean, he probably he did. He probably did. And he was, like, he was like, you know what? That's the way I want to go. Yeah. Well, and what's That's interesting. That's really sad. I, I didn't know that. Sad, but in, like very sad. But he um, actually overdosed and was hospitalized. And he signed himself out of the hospital. And then five days later, killed himself. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just, it's I all not, very sad. I did not know that. He was 60 years old, and he's buried at Mount Hope Cemetery in his hometown of Independence, Missouri. Um, And, you know, we're going to go into his legacy because he is, like, he's incredible. And I love, like, his way of writing. Like, Picnic is such a great play, and it's such an easy read. And, like, you can hear it so clearly, like, the characters and everything and the the town in your head. So, um, yeah, so let's go into, like, what he... What he has left behind. Sure. Um, he is a star on the Walk of Fame, which is awesome. Um, and, you know, beginning with the premiere of Come Back Little Sheba in 1950, he actually uh, became very wealthy. When you find success, you uh, get a lot of money. I don't know if you know this. Um, well, I mean, you might say that, but like like this podcast is very successful. And yeah. We don't have a lot of money. I, that's very true. So we're an so, oxymoron to this. Yeah. Uh, we're, yeah. It's not. It's, if that's it's, the right word to you. It's. <laughs> It's the, uh, it's a, it's not the rule, you know, it's more like a, we're the exception to the rule. Right. 
Anyway, so he <laughs> became wealthy with the success of his plays and movies. And based on the advice from his financial advisors at the time, they told him to buy works of contemporary art so that he could reduce his taxes by donating them to museums. Oh, um, so he was a tax evader. Nope. Uh, <laughs> I don't... No, like a lot of wealthy people do that. I don't know. They evade taxes. They just feel... And like that's why our roads are falling apart, people. Are they? <laughs> um, according to his biographer, he bought only what he liked but had an excellent fortune in choosing what was, like, going to become, like, really valuable. So he chose a lot of, like, Pollocks or de Kooning's or, like, uh, Modigliani, and that was before they, like, took off. So he kind of had, like, an eye for it, which I thought was cool. I used to work in a museum. Who's Modiglioni? An, an artist. Oh, okay. I don't, yeah. I've heard of the other two. I just didn't. Yeah. Oh, okay. like, am I supposed to know him? Uh, well, I don't know him right off the bat. I couldn't describe his work. But okay. Yeah, he's famous. Great. Um, but Inge liked mo- the modern art he bought because in its abstractions and distor- distortions, he saw a reflection of the distorted times in which he lived, the times he tried to portray in his written work. Um, he donated a total of 10 contemporary paintings to the Nelson Gallery in Kansas City, Missouri. So we might have seen them. We didn't even know. Yeah, it. that's know. our museum. Wonder. We have to go back. Um, to find the inge the inge works yes so i don't know i just love that and thought it was cool because uh when different art forms intersect i think it's powerful um now there is a black box theater named for william inge and murphy hall at the university of kansas oh he just gets a black box i know it's so lame jeez um, you might as well just name a refrigerator after him what happened to you <laughs> Well, nobody named the refrigerator (laughs) after me. Yeah, I'll say that. Um, He's also a member of the American Theater Hall of Fame, and he was inducted posthumous... How do you say this word? Posthumously. Yes. Post post or posthumously. You know, after he died... After he died, (laughs) he was inducted in the Theater Hall of Fame in 1979, um, since 1982, Independence Community College's William Inge Center of the Arts in his hometown has sponsored an annual William Inge Theater Festival in honor of playwrights, um, which is like, it's a That's huge a big, theater festival. It's a festival. big deal. Yeah, I want to yeah, go. I know. Me too. Um, the William Inge Collection at the college is the most extensive collection of Inge material, including 400 manuscripts, films, correspondence, theater programs, and other related items of his. Um Now, I wanted to give this quote about Inge because it talks about him and, like, Picnic. Um, So this is from the New York Observer. It says, William Inge, the grain belt Tennessee Williams, was one of the three most important playwrights in the American theater of the 50s, along with Williams and Arthur Miller. Nobody wrote more profoundly about the frustrations and longings of small-town Midwesterns, and Picnic is generally considered Inge's masterpiece. Present, um, presenting all men and women as uniformly flawed and in need of psychological diagnoses and treatment. Oh my gosh, I read the same thing. Yeah. And I, well, we can talk about that line maybe later. Okay. I just it was flabbergasted by it. Yeah. So, presenting all men and women as uniformly flawed and in need of psychological diagnoses and treatment, the Kansas-born writer divided critics and audiences from the start. But Picnic is his least shocking play and is most accessible. Picnic is really a play about how you always want to reach what you cannot have. Every character in it longs for something that is just beyond reach. Beauty, marriage, respectability, economic security, true love, emotional peace. Inge writes warmly with such sensitive, understanding compassion about little people desperate for a place in a bigger world that his work is timeless. And I thought that was just... Perfect. Yeah, Not yeah. I mean, yeah. We don't even have to talk about the play yeah. anymore. That <laughs> you know. person in the New York Observer said it all. Yeah. Um. So that is, and I. Uh, one more thing about William Inge. All of his plays center around like solitary protagonists encumbered with strange sexual relations. It's like that's like a huge thing. Like bus stop is like. There's always like a very like kind of like. You know, the Marilyn Monroe esque character in that. Oh, and then we yeah, have I've, Hal. Never, I've never read it. And then, and then in, in, in Come Back Shiba, Little Shiva, it's the. Well, Lola is like all sorts of whacked out. And yeah. Like kind of, in a way, not not like boy crazy or whatever, but she's not getting what she wants from her husband and stuff. Right. So, I don't know. I just, 
you know, I, I think that was something he kind of struggled with as well because I know it said that he has a wife, but then I also read that he, um, we he's never like been like, oh, I'm gay, but oh. everyone kind of thought that of him, and he actually like including had this, his wife. I don't know because I, <laughs> I I read that, but then I didn't read anything later about like after his wife died or you know like anything. So oh, I never heard that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe I read it wrong. I wonder if he in Tennessee had something going on at one point. Yeah, that's how that works. Um, Why? <laughs> I don't know. But, no, oh. and then there's this one actress he had, like, a very, like, emotional relationship with, where it was, like, everything romantic but physical. Um, but then it just wasn't, like, enough for her in love, the end. So love she majored. Letter, love letters and. <laughs> she majored. She married someone else, and he became very upset with her. Um, so, yeah. Come on, lady. I know. But he's just. He's really great, and I think, unless you have any words, maybe we can move on to Picnic. Um, okay, so Picnic was written uh, whoa, on the verge of the sexual revolution, which I think is interesting. Somebody said it was like the harbinger of the sec- sexual revolution, meaning like it's like, it's like, hey, guys, guess what? Some, some crazy stuff is going to come. And I think it kind of represented... Um, for for American audiences, and I don't okay, I disagree with what that New York Observer person said because it's like it's his least shocking play, but it's like okay, sure, looking at it from the twenty first century, like no, it's not shocking. Comeback Little Sheba is very shocking because a, a husband comes at his wife with an axe on stage. You know, it's like that's shocking, I guess. And also, like but alcoholism wasn't really um, talked about at the time. It's not really even talked about now, right? You know? So it's right. like so to say that. Picnic is his least shocking play, I don't think, is really saying much, you know? Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, so. No, I get that. And, I mean, yeah, because you think about at the times, like you are saying, like, in the 50s, yes. Now, eh, you know, we're all so used to, like, shirtless men and, like, sex. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's not shocking now. It's fairly tame now. (laughs) Um, But it's still, um, it's got that that kind of lustful... uh, teenage romance kind of stuff going on for sure yeah um you know and and also this kind of time period that the play is set in like we've talked about before of tennessee williams and the arthur millers like it it falls under the realm of realism so if you're thinking like how would i produce this play you kind of would have to be like emotionally ready to make a set like, as it's realistic as possible. The set, yeah, so the set is comprised of two, basically, like, the backs of two houses. Yeah. And so I can talk about the production that I was in and, like, oh, all yes. that kind of stuff. We'll Next, jump it was into like, it. It was, like, real, the set was, like, really good. I don't well, doubt that. Scott. Oh, my you gosh. You guys do it right. I don't know. I don't know. It was, uh, I don't know. They pulled out all the stops for that one, that's for sure. Dang. Yeah, like, you know... It would be so hard. It's so hard, but so cool. Like, I remember even seeing Come Back Little Sheba, which is, you know, like we said, written by him it, at Benedictine. And yeah. it was like a working sink. It was like, mm. you know, like yeah, all, all those that. All those touches that um, just really transport you into the, to make it seem like there, it's a slice, it's a, it's a cutaway of somebody's yeah, house. You've, yeah, you've literally cut into it yeah. and you're watching. Yeah, um, yeah, so there's no... life. Yeah, exactly. So I think I do you prefer like if you like if you have if you had to get the chance to go see maybe like a um, I don't know like a a very theatrical show Mm -hmm. like um, Eurydice by Sarah Rule, another podcast, another play that we did, Mm -hmm. very not realism at all, yeah, or like a very much like like whatever a picnic. Which one would you choose? Would you prefer to see the more theatrical or the more realistic? I think I would choose the more realistic. Okay. Um, I think that always breaks my heart a little more than theatricality does. Yes. You know. Um, but theatricality at the same time, I love and it's like entertaining and, it, you know, it can be very impactful too, obviously, yeah. but I think when I just done it like really, really well. well, like you've got to be like so, <laughs> like like uh, when we saw a Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime, mm-hmm. so theatrical, it was incredible. And it was done like, no realism whatsoever. I mean, like it was realistic how characters talked and stuff, right? But there was like no set. It was 
it was all like done very theatrically. It was, it was incredible. Yeah. So that'd be amazing. So if it was like that, then yeah, I'd probably see that. But those are kind of like a dime a dozen, you know, like, no, that's no. The, that's the wrong opposite, expression. Opposite what's, the, what's the opposite of that? Um, uh, a dozen rare, a dime. <laughs> rare, and, rare and cherished, I guess. <laughs> I feel cherished. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, no, if, yes, those are hard to find. So I, I think I'm just thinking kind of generally. But what about you? Um, gosh, I mean, it, again, it's got to be done right. The theatrical, I feel like not that realism is easier to mm-hmm. do, but it's a little more accessible for right. like a regional theater or, I would go or especially a community. Yeah, I that feel confident good. like, okay, you can probably portray um, you can probably give me something that's pretty close. So I, like you can probably give me a, a pretty good cat on a hot tin roof. Mm-hmm. And then if I went to see, if I heard that a community theater was doing Curious Incident, I'd be like, oh, I don't know about this, guys. I'm I don't nervous. know if we should do this. Yeah. Well, yeah, that show is hard. Yeah, it is. Um, but also, I just wanted to say one more thing about the realism that William Inch does so well in his writing, where I just feel um, like it is so conversational and you've had these conversations before, even if it is like written in the fifties, like the first scene with Madge and her mom and the, you know, the mom's like trying to talk to her about how Alan would be a good boy to marry. And he's like a safe choice. And like, Oh, you really need to, you know, Oh my Get into him or like you, all this stuff. Yeah. It's really wild. Yeah. It's like, it's like, it's like, do you like it? She was like, do you like it when he kisses you? And she yeah. was like, and she was like, nah, it's fine. It's like, well, do you like, tell him that you like it yeah it's like so wild yeah but I just remember like even with my own mom she if I like liked I was like felt weird about a boy or not as into it and she's just like oh my gosh Sarah you're so picky like it was like that berating like just just try it just tell him you like him who cares Alan is great (laughs) he's he's got a rich father and it's just like whoa because I mean it's just such uh I mean timeless energy about it but it's it's very Midwestern. I felt very seen in in I feel this like play. you relate to Madge? Well, I guess we oh, haven't really yeah. even described Madge yet. Yeah, well, Madge... Actually, I would like to describe Madge. Okay, so Madge is basically our main character oh, here. Oh, so you're describing Madge. I was just kidding. Oh, oh no. sorry, sorry, sorry. No, it was just funny. So I was like, I want to do it. And then you're like... No, I was just giving him background of the audience, I love it. a little background. Yeah. Madge is basically our main character. Would you like to st- would you like to tell her more tell our audience more about Madge? Yes. So and, and sorry, one more thing. Disclaimer, as always, you get a lot more out of this podcast if you read the play first. Um we there's anyway, that's what I was just oh, that's what I was gonna say. Love it. Um so we'll talk about your production, obviously. This is just kind of a small tidbit of my uh Oh, I'd, connection yeah. with picnic oh um oh oh yeah so sure. i uh in my realism class in at scad we uh worked on picnic for i would say a couple weeks three three or four weeks and we had to you know like do an intense c- character analysis we had to work on our scenes with our partner and really like get in that mindset um of it and so i played madge uh in this scene And so I just wanted to read, like, the character analysis because I think it describes uh, not only Madge but Millie and her mom, like, pretty well. Okay. Um, This is from my writing. Uh, Just it was like a personal diary moment. Um, I'm sorry if it's not super eloquent. Uh, Here we go. Okay. I'm so excited for this. (laughs) When did you write this? Um, I mean, it was... Your your first year My freshman year, yeah. Or my freshman year. God bless. My first Uh, year at SCAD. Whatever basically freshman energy um okay i have this sinking feeling my whole life that people have only liked me because of my looks honestly i feel like i'm up on this pedestal and nobody really sees me it's almost like everyone always talks past me like i wouldn't be able to handle what they're saying no one really tries to get to know me they think i'm a surface level person not capable of thinking superficial not capable of thinking past anything superficial in life People talk to Millie more because she's the smart one. But the thing is that no one gives me a chance to be smart. She always puts down my intellect, even though I'm smarter than she thinks I am. I let her do it because I feel bad for her, because everyone likes me more. But honestly, I feel like Millie has more to offer the world than I do. I wish she would realize how great she is and stop hating me. 
My mother fusses over me so much and it really just drives me crazy. I feel like she's trying to live vicariously through me and I absolutely hate it. I feel like I can't make decisions on my own. She chooses who I date, my aspirations out of life, even down to what I wear. I know she is proud of the product she's created, but I don't even feel like a complete person half the time. She babies me and she doesn't respect any of my idea ideas. She's over the moon about me dating Alan, which is infuriating. It makes me like him less. He is handsome enough and pleasant enough to talk to. I know that I would have a stable life with him, but I don't want to be with him forever. I don't want to be safe and secure. I don't love him. My mother keeps talking about my whole life with him and I don't want that life. And this, there's this other side of me that wants passion and the unknown, and I see that in Hal. My whole body has never felt so alive from that moment he touched me at the dance. All of my senses were tingling fervently. I felt my heart in my throat, and I couldn't take my eyes off him. I never wanted that moment to end. Even though I knew he wasn't who I should want, that intrigued me even more. When I kissed him for the first time, I couldn't help but kiss him. I couldn't not kiss him for another second. I just wanted to be as close to him as possible. He was absolutely intoxicating. I wanted to be his, and I want him to be my unknown future. I don't know if this feeling was love or not, because I have never felt it before. I think I want it to be love, because I just want it to last the rest of my life. I feel like he really saw me, body and soul. And from that moment on, I knew I couldn't live without him. I realized that I've never truly been alive in my whole life before him. So she's feeling a lot of... she's <laughs> Based she, on my <laughs> interpretation, yeah. What? Sorry. She's feeling a lot of what? <laughs> she's feeling a lot of things a lot of teenagers feel, right? She's right. 18. No one gets me. She's No one gets me. My mom is so controlling. <laughs> yeah. Um, my mom is... In the, literally in the first scene, my mom is like per, like pressuring me to like have, have sex. sex with Alan, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so that he'll like keep me around because he's about to go to college, yeah, you know, and, he and like ha- or he's in college or whatever, and yeah. he's rich and or his dad's rich or whatever. So yeah, it's uh, it's it's that that was good. I like that. Thank you. You, you captured Madge. Thank you. I very try. well. <laughs> a little diary she, page. She a little bit of that was like uh, one of Olivia Rodrigo's songs. Um, it was like I'm uh, obsessed with you. It's brutal out here. <laughs> where's my Where's my effing teenage dream? Is yeah. what she's trying to say here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If Olivia Rodrigo put that, it played mad. She'd be like, "Where's my effing teenage, teenage dream? dream?" Gosh darn it. Um, but yeah, I think so. That's kind of where I see Madge. I will say, from Hal, who's like our male lead, you kind of read anti-hero. for anti-hero, but you're all in. Um, I feel like he's a little misunderstood. I got a lot more from it. I saw him when I was a high schooler. Yeah. I saw him as like the villain. And yeah. I think it's so easy. I think you can you can see him to as do that. that. Yeah. yeah. But you know, if you read the stage directions, like yes, you say like his shirt was off, like the is her shirt is off the whole first act. But it's you know, he was working in the field, and then uh, Mrs. Potts is like, oh, I'll clean your shirt for you. And he's like, are people going to mind? Is that okay? And he, oh, and it he says, gets, like, worried in, like, the stage directions. And then he gets he gets put in a box of, like, oh, well, you're just trying to show off your gorgeous your abs. washboard abs. Yeah. And so then – and I feel like that's what – he kind of feels the same things as Madge a little bit, where people don't give him really a chance because he's hot. I mean, it's a first-world problem to they, be sure, but, like <laughs> – well, but you know. the, but those two, you know, they find common ground in that. Yeah. You know, and the conversation that they have before they go off, they go off and, into and, the woods and and, and, and and take each other. Yes. Um, um, that you know they find common ground and like yeah, like you know what what you were saying in your little diary was like you know like everybody everybody likes me more, but they un, they want to talk to Millie. They don't really yeah. care about talking to me. And like there's a scene and she's talking about it. Well, I, I'm always objectified. There's a scene where Howard, who's in his 40s, is objectifying Madge, and he's like, he's like, he's talking to Hal, and he's like, man, she's uh, she's really hot, isn't she? And they're like watching her, not change in her window, in her yeah. window, and so like, who knows what she's wearing, and like, she's like doing her hair or whatever, yeah, you know. So it's like, yeah, it's like you you go through your whole life thinking that, and you feel sorry for Madge for sure, and Hal. Right. I felt much more sorry for him. This read, this yeah. Reading. No, I, and I, I don't know, I'd love to direct this play or I'd love to, like, work on it because I think it is, it has to be such, like, a kind of a 
balance you have to play with with him not only as an actor but how you direct it of just because you don't want him to come off like a douchebag like you and want, i don't if, think yeah yeah and, and if, he and has if, heart in him he has heart and if he yeah. comes off as like a gaston character yeah as a as a braggart soldier then right. i think you've done it wrong exactly yeah yeah so i guess with this play um to move on a little bit i think it's pretty incredible all of the different types of characters like uh, mm. Inge has written in this, where we have like the hopeful widows, the embittered spinsters, the idealistic teenagers, and the restless wanderers, like all kind of talking together. There's not a ton of plays where you see like teenagers talking so much with adults, or like you know, like all of that kind of community. You really feel it in the conversations on these like back porches of mm. these. I don't know, like Rosemary coming on to Hal, or like that that like weird energy um who's the spinster who lives with madge and millie yeah should she's we, like should we do should we do the plot first or oh yeah yeah sorry okay okay so we're just honest you know okay so we've got the two back porches right mm-hmm. we've got the madge millie and flo they are flo is their mom madge is 18 millie's younger mm-hmm. it's labor day weekend and there's going to be a picnic. But guess what? Hal, he's having himself a real hot boy summer as well. And he is kind of a, a vagrant, I guess. He comes into town looking for a job. And he's the, and so he's working for Mrs. Potts, their neighbor, for a little bit. Um, and he is friends. Hal is friends with Alan, who's dating Madge. And Hal is basically coming to town to be like, hey, Alan, can you give me a job or whatever? And then... Kind of just hilarity ensues, basically. And, you know, relationships fall apart, all that kind of stuff. You've got a little subplot with Rosemary and Howard. Rosemary's um, an older lady. Not older. She's in her 30s, probably. Howard's mm-hmm. kind of in his 40s. They're, like, going steady, and they um, they advance their relationship, I guess, throughout the play. And Rosemary kind of, like, in a weird way, like, pressures Howard to marry him, her, uh, which is kind of funny. Um uh and at the end you've got this decision that Madge needs to make because Alan you know like gets so Madge and Hal end up sleeping together very scandalous and Alan gets super super mad and is going to call the cops or calls the cops on Hal cuz like they lying to them saying that Hal stole his car and all that kind of stuff so they're going to like they're about to chase him out of town so he's like Madge, I've got to, I've got to get on this train for Oklahoma. I got to, I got to get out of here. Come with me. And Madge is like, no, I can't. And then, um, the next morning, what happens? I mean, how, or she goes after Hal. She goes after Hal. Yeah. She leaves. She leaves. She and chooses Flo's that like, adventurous life. Flo's like, no, my daughter. Yeah. Well, Flo actually has this kind of incredible, or this, there's an incredible kind of moment, um, after she leaves, where she's like, she's so young. There's so many things I meant to tell her and never got around to it. And Mrs. Potts says, let her learn them for herself, Flo. Uh, a very Finding Nemo moment. Yeah. Well, I just think that's, like, cool where, like, I don't know. Just for me in, like, my personal life, like, losing my mom or something, where there's times through this year it's like, oh, I can't ask her this. Or, oh, I can't have this life experience with that. I can't, you know. But there is like some comfort where you, you know, this is your life. And as much as you take advice in from other people, like you have to kind of like find this journey for yourself. And so I just kind of found that really profound. Yeah. And eloquently. Yeah. And and again, with like this coming back to it now, I think I saw the ending where Madge leaves as like a as a high schooler. I was like, oh, that's so sad. That she's like leaving her family (laughs) for this. Well, for this, I mean, for I mean, this guy she barely knows. She's known him for two days. I know. See, I'm a psycho romantic, so I'm like, yes, oh my god. (laughs) Yeah, and then I saw they're so hot. Right, they are. They are so. They are so hot. Honestly, but like, honestly, like, like I think this reading it this time. I'm kind of much more like I'm rooting for Madge. I'm like at the end, I'm like, yeah, go right. get him. Well, you see you in know? the beginning when she is talking like, you know, to her mom, to her sister, to her neighbor, like 
you see how they talk to her. You see that she is unhappy and they're like, oh, you could be doing this. Like if you got with Alan, you could be like this. And she's like, ah, but I don't want I don't, to. I don't know if I really want that life. Right. But it sounds like so nice to everyone else. But Madge is just like, why? Is, why? why am I just letting this happen to me rather right. than like actively being a participant in like her own existence? Right. I don't know. Right. Yeah. So that was a great that was a great synopsis. One of our best play synopses. Wow. I will say. Really? Short, concise, to the point. Yeah. We love it. Um It's a pretty simple plot for most there's there's not much to it. Right. There's a couple other things that are happening, but that I mean that's the gist of it. Yeah. No, I uh you know, and there's the theme of this play, a theme is youth. Um, and how that is like a precious gift that must be savored instead of squandered. Um, so you have all of the older people in town pressuring the younger kids, like make the right decisions, like make sure, like what, what do you want out of life? And this is what you should want out of life. And like, this is how you get it. Like that kind of energy, like in the b- beginning of the play, Flo speculates that her daughter might be working at the town's dime store until she's 40 which is a depressing idea to Madge. Madge hates that. Yeah. And then the play's conclusion, Madge embraces adventure, thwarting the conventional wisdom given by the older character, her mom. Yeah. So it's like a reverse um, on that idea of like, you don't tell me what my youth is to me. Like I'm taking ownership of my youth and like what I want out of life. Hmm. Um, And you can see like all the older characters. What did they squander their youth? You know, it's like, it's like, why? So I, right. You, you know, I never, I thought that Flo, like we found out kind of like why Flo is the way she is, you know, she's very controlling, but also at the same time, she's not that controlling. She yeah, is, yeah, yeah. she's, she, you know, Madge is always like, oh my gosh, Flo's, but like. There are much worse mothers out there. No, for sure. In, even in dramatic literature, it's like she's I, not she's not like a she's not like a Cinderella's stepmother kind no. of level. She's like pretty normal. Yeah, and I think there's this one line in it which kind of I don't remember exactly how it goes, but Madge says something like, "Did you know what love was?" Because she's trying to figure out if she loves Hal. It's like towards the end, and then I think Flo says something along the lines of like, "No, I've never felt like that." Because Matt just kind of explaining know. how she felt. Um, well, I yeah, just... I know. I know the line you're talking about. It says, um, "Oh gosh." I need the page sooner, but I think that just gives like such insight to Flo, where she made all the right the right choices because she thought that's what you're like supposed to do in life. And then, so she doesn't really understand even what Madge is like experiencing. Maybe it's on this page. Um, Oh, here it is. Here it is. So Madge says, so this is what, right when Madge is about to leave for Oklahoma. So Madge says, I would have, I would have mom. Oh, oh no. Flo says, at least you didn't marry him. Madge, I would have, I would have. Oh, mom, what can you do with the love you feel? Where is there, where is there you can take it? And then Flo says, beaten and deflated. I, I never found out. But I think she's lying there. I think she did. I think she, I think Flo was very very hurt by whoever Madge's dad is, you know, mm, and that she's kind of she's kind of pushing that on him. And then the next page, she says, um, maybe she Flo says, maybe you think you love him now, but in a few years you'll hate the day he set foot on our porch. Madge, he needs me, Mom. Flo, he needs you because he's no good. He'll never be able to support you. And when he does have a job, he'll spend all his money on drink. I know. And after a while, I'll be other women. So mm. it is. Madge is almost doing the same. Well, we th- we can assume that Madge is kind of doing the same thing that Flo did. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's interesting. I guess I never analyzed kind of that. I thought I just took it as like, um, she married the guy she's supposed to, and then like she wasn't really in love, and then he was kind of bad and not great to her. That kind of direction. I mean, it could be. But I think it's a hotter choice if she was like Madge. Yeah, she she kind of ran away from home. Yeah. She married a guy too young. Or maybe she got pregnant out of wedlock. Who knows? My gosh. The scandal. The scandal. Um, No, I like that. 
That's interesting. I love plays. <laughs> you get to make up. <laughs> Anyways. Um, but also going up with this idea of like youth, uh, throughout the play, the adult characters like envy the young, like during the um, kind of tirade aimed at Hal, Rosemary like says to him, you think just because you're young, you can push people aside and not pay them any mind, but you won't stay young forever. Did you ever think about that? Mm. Like they see it as like a power. And, like, once it's taken away from you, you're, like, nothing. And so you only have this, like, small window of time you can, like, do something with your life. And then once it's gone, you're kind of, like, fighting for it. Yeah. Interesting, too, that Rosemary is a teacher. Yeah. She she spends all of her time with children, you know, Mm -hmm. and it exerts power over them. Yeah. And it's partly because, like, well, you know, it was, what, when is this place set? The I fifth, the, I don't know. This, I think it's set in you think it's more earlier? like the 20s or 30s. Oh, okay. I think. I don't remember. I don't know. I don't think it's that important. But it's like one, it's like, well, you know, Rosemary is a single woman. Being a teacher is one of the only jobs she actually could have to support herself. But it's just interesting. Yeah. Well, yeah. That Between she says that, that or like a, a secretary vibe. Sure. I hate America. No, it's just because oh. of that. Yeah. No. You don't you don't like independence, Sarah? <laughs> I like independence, Kansas. Um I also love at the beginning of the script it says the summer's flower is to the summer sweet. Shakespeare sonnet 94. Ah. Sweet, sweet summer flowers. Sweet summer flowers. Beautiful. And I will give this one more line that I love cuz it's just like so dramatic and it's how uh confessing his love to Madge before he gets on the train before he knows like yeah. you know. He's like, when you hear that train pull out of town and know I'm on it, your little heart's going to be busted because you love me. You love me. You love me. You love me. <laughs> it's like, ooh, spooky boy. Spooky boy. He, you only just met her, my guy. Yeah, but it's like, it's that passion. It's that teenage first love. That must, have been, like, that must have been some car ride they had. I'll tell you what. Yeah. Okay, so can we talk Wait, about can how? we talk about, well, can we talk about your experience with the show a little bit? Oh, yeah, Real sure. quick. Um, so well, walk us through okay. that vibe. Yeah. For you. Uh, uh, okay. So um, setting the scene, 2009 spring. Um, th- a lot of you will say, like, my gosh, you did you did picnic in high school, and I'm like, yeah, it was a very scandalous choice. <laughs> um, my mom almost didn't let me do it, um, but I was I'm like, mom, and I was like, mom, like it's not that bad, and I had not read it, of course. <laughs> Um, my friends are doing it um, yes. but not even like I, didn't, I hardly had any friends in it and I was just like I, just <laughs> I, wanted, any friends. I didn't have any friends my, my, I don't know anyway so I, I got to audition and it was great this production um, well okay I'll talk about the part I played the part I played is now there are several times when Mrs. Potts's mom yells off stage and she's like Helen Helen so I got to be that voice that was great <laughs> so I had a very small role. So you started your and, voice that over kind of acting career at a young age. Uh, yeah, 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 I did. You know, it was it's a thing you know, it's been a long time coming. Everybody thinks like, oh man, it's a sudden shoot to stardom. And it's like, nah, I've been working on this my whole life. Um, and then there's this character at the end who, in the script, is just an offstage voice. Okay, um, but he comes in at the or is offstage at the end, and he yells at Flo and Millie. And he says, hey, goon girl. And Millie then says to him, poop deck McCullough. He thinks he's so smart. And the character's not even in the script. It says boy's voice. It doesn't say poop deck. (laughs) But that was my name. And that was. And so they had the director had me come on stage, which was very nice. I got to come on stage instead of just being an offstage voice. But because my nickname was, I guess my nickname was poop deck. He put me in a sailor outfit, like a full on, <laughs> like sailor hat, like in striped Independence, Kansas. Yeah, and I'm like, and I'm like, Schnitz, why, why <laughs> am I dressed like this? And he's like, because well, your name is Poop Deck. And I'm like, so I had, to, I, am I in this like fantasy world where I just like work on a ship? Like, am I a pirate? Oh I don't know. I anyway, it's it so weird. Um, but my gosh, that play. Let me tell you the star power that's in this play. Okay. First of all, it's um, okay. So the guy who played Hal, his name is Joe Anderson. He's still a professional actor in Chicago. 
he went on to like do some really good stuff. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So he is a, he is a, he, at least the last I heard, he's like a working regional actor. Dang. Yeah. Yeah. What Howard, <laughs> and he was a senior in high school. Um, Madge, played by Maria Heffron, now Maria Carter at court, right? Um, great actress. She's, she was, they were dynamite together. Although, uh, apparently Joe was probably very, he was a big, he was real cocky. My, oh my gosh. He would eat Doritos would eat before Dorit- they kiss. Yeah. That's what yeah. Catherine, Will's sister, Which I'm like, that's not the worst thing you could eat, but it's pretty bad. Yeah. Yeah. Sad. Yeah, it's really gross. Um, and then our Howard was Michael Judah. Uh, who is also. Who we love. Who we love. Um, and maybe he listens to this. I don't know. <laughs> He but anyway, he's one. also like a working regional actor now, or at least he was in grad school. I don't really know Where what he's at? up to. I don't, uh, he was in grad school at Florida State. Oh, that's right. And okay. Getting his F- MFA. Um, so I'm like, that cast was just star studded. Dang. Yeah, it was crazy. That is that was, awesome. That, I wish that I could go back and watch that play now, like live, because I'm like, I bet it was pretty good. Yeah. And as I remember, uh, even. Even Flo, she was a girl that was in my class, but she always had this like very mature look and stuff. And she, I mean, she was super good as well. I don't. She never actually did another show because she didn't like the director, but she was super good too. Dang. So, yeah, it was crazy. Well, I'm gonna start calling you poop deck. Yeah, and the set. Yeah, please do, <laughs> please do. I, I, <laughs> I. If you're gonna write in fan mail, just say dear poop deck. Dear poop deck. And the, and the set was like incredible. It was like two like very realistic houses. We had our, our set designer and, and construction and master carpenter. He was like a, an old construction guy, and he Dang. he really man, he went above and beyond. We had grass on the stage. No, it wasn't real grass, but it was it was it was turf. That's crazy. Yeah, it was it was nuts. I love that. Yeah, I, I was like watch I was like I know I was like I is really want a wanna, DVD. I if there is one, I do not have it. It's circa two thousand nine. Two thousand nine. So yeah, it's a I don't know. Area. I'm sure they did record it. Oh, maybe they didn't. I don't know. Wait, tell us your thoughts on Hal. Oh, Hal. Oh, I I sometimes I'm like, is he like a pathological liar? Like, is he? Why did he say that? Okay, so the story that he tells, um. Alan at the beginning, like why he's in town, is crazy. Okay, so he goes, he he, he and Alan are talk or Alan. I always get their names mixed up. Hal and Alan, it's really it's hard. He he says to Alan, like, hey, like I was gonna pay you back because I saved up all my money. He owes him money from whatever, but I can't pay you back because it was all stolen from me by these two women who picked me up on the side of the road. I we were, I did a threesome with them and then they stole all my money. And I'm like, that didn't happen. Yeah, I don't know if it's a pathological liar. I think Hal, um, so so we've said, like, imagine Hal kind of struggle with the same thing where no one kind of respects them because they're just pretty people or whatever. Yeah. So Madge kind of, like, internalizes everything where Hal, I feel like, he feels like he has to prove himself. Definitely. Or, like, be cool, be tough, be, like, the American dream and the American, like, hot boy energy yeah like and so he probably makes up these things to like boost up his own persona so that people will think he maybe to they'll think he's up, greater than to keep up the the, the legend that yes. is Hal. yeah interesting so i don't think it's like uh i think that's probably the root of it i don't think he's like lying just to lie but at the same time i'm like he's like madge i love you baby like i'm gonna want to be free with you forever but i'm like no he doesn't yeah. You know, I mean, like, I mean, like, let's fast forward two, three months down the road. He's going to be like, see ya or probably not even leave a note. He's just gone one day. I know. That's what I, I do know? worry for them. I don't. Yeah. I don't I, think it's forever. It's it's it can't be can it? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm so sorry, uh, man, uh, but it's not going to end yeah. well for you. But again, you need to make your own mistakes. But yeah, that, yeah, you need to make your own mistakes. I'm proud of you for taking a stand and taking your life and. You know, if you're listening yeah. out there, Madge, we're here for you. Will Alan take her back? Probably. Yeah, Alan's she's the prettiest legend. girl in town. Ugh. Alan, how do you how do you describe Alan? He's um um he's a simp. Uh, yeah, <laughs> he's I, a total simp. He's a total simp, but also just like an annoying simp, where he's like, cause oh, he like totally gaslights 
uh, Madge. Okay, so after Madge and Hal, like, have sex, and then the next morning when he's like, you know, oh, I called the cops. Don't worry about it, babe. I know how Hal can be. Don't worry, basically, that Mm. you slept with him. I know you don't like him. Like, basically telling her how to feel and, like, that it's fine and they'll work through it or something. Uh. And not even letting Madge, like, speak her truth, her feelings. Right, right. Um, so I did not find that energy cute. Also, also, ha- Alan and Madge, it's not like they've been dating since eighth grade. No. They've been dating for the summer. They've been dating a few months. Yeah. Yeah. Cause yeah. Cause her mom was like, lock it down. Yeah. So it's, it's, ju- it's just weird. It's not cute simp energy. It's toxic no. simp energy. No, 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 yeah. No. Yeah. Very toxic. Well, yeah. And, I think... and it's, and it's, um, a little bit about Millie. Millie's kind of the tomboy. Oh, yeah, um, the younger sister, and she like has a thing for Alan, mm-hmm. which I think is so cute and hilarious. And, and yeah, and, and then Alan so just like sad. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Alan's like, oh, cool man, I got bigger things to worry about. Yeah, he is too distracted yeah. by what's going Millie's, on. Millie's journey is very interesting in this. I love. Well, also one of my favorite lines because all of the characters have such like great arcs where um, they watch kind of what's happened. Like you know, Rosemary. And how we end up, like, getting married. And then Madge goes off. And Millie, after seeing what her sister is going through, is just like, this is literally the second to last page. When I get out of college, I'm going to New York. And I'll write novels that'll shock people right out of their senses. I'll become so great and famous, I'll never have to fall in love. Whoa. Because she's just, Cause she's like, been, like, hurt by Al- She's been hurt by Alan. Yeah. She's got some dude named Poop Deck calling her a goon girl. Yeah. She's been the entire... <laughs> Way to insert. <laughs> the, entire, the entire play. There's also... We didn't... There's a, there's a newsboy character who's, like, a newspaper guy. Bomber. Yeah. And he's been making fun of Millie the entire play. Yeah. So she's just like, whatever. I'm getting the heck out of Dodge yeah. this, as and, soon as I and can. And Millie, like, smokes cigarettes. She's, like... 13 yeah like she's she's a bad girl she gets drunk she throws up at the picnic oh that's right and so that's why hal ditches her so it's just it's a great play it has very midwestern vibes it's it truly is one of my favorite plays i've i've read it probably three or four times at different points in my life and yeah. I, I do love it like every time i'm like wow this is such a fast read and it's so good so good and it says so much i don't and know it's a great summer play it's i mean it's set around labor day weekend <laughs> good for us yeah my birthday nice yeah shout out shout out to so, the birthday i mean i'm probably too old to play madge but it was always you got a, a young face yeah right I think you could still play Madge. I know. Well, yeah, I saw the because it was just recently on Broadway in 2017. I think they did a, yeah, with Sebastian Stan as Hal. Oh my gosh! Ah, uh, he was of probably my life. too old for that. Yeah. Well, but the Madge looked old too. She oh. looks like an actor I've seen before, uh, or an actress I've seen. Um, well, Sebastian Stan, I would have killed to see him as Hal. I will say. I mean, yeah. I mean, you can't get much better than that. Yeah. It's like, I saw a couple of videos and I was like, yeah, he's, yeah, he's, can. that was perfectly cast. Oh my gosh. Maggie Grace is her name. So if you recognize that name, I recognize the face. I don't know what she's in, but she was in it. But this is mad. She looks old. She was. It was she's cre- 37. It was born, she was born in 1983. Whoa. Yeah. So uh, maybe there's hope for me yet. I yeah. don't know. But... Now we're going to move into That's a sad. segment. That's sad because I think a, a, a real 18-year-old could really bring something to that. Yeah. No, totally. I mean, Sebastian Stan was way too old, too. Yeah. But we all love but him. But, like, we'll forgive you. Yeah. You know, if you, I mean, his Sebastian abs were Stan, insane. I'm sure. Yeah. They really oiled him up for the first oh, act. I'm sure. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, okay. That's all I have to say about Picnic, I think, um, for now. Yeah. I think... Do you let have me, any... Let me check my notes. Just... Uh, Oh, I was, it says that, that one quote in the New York Observer, it's mm-hmm. like, Picnic presents all characters as uniformly flawed and in need of psychological diagnosis and treatment, which I disagree with, but I don't think they all need psychological di- diagnosis and treatment. I think they all just need to, you know, go after their dreams and stuff. Yeah, I don't know. Like that we said, everyone extreme. needs therapy. Well, everyone needs therapy, but like, <laughs> sure. Just kidding. Anyway. No, I don't know. I Yeah, I feel like you kind of have to view characters as that. You focus so much on their flaws because you have to make them more human. Huh. So it's probably from more of that kind of perspective. But, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. Well, I will say the misogyny is unreal in it, but I think in, in this, just like how they sexualize and like. Oh, create, oh, but that's like part of the point. That's like part of the point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So don't get like too sad about that women out there. Like, I, I, and just trying to say something with it. Right. You know, and match his character. Um, because when I was younger, I was like, oh my God, <laughs> what the heck? Uh, it feels gross when you're first reading it at the time. Oh. Yeah. As a woman. It's meant to be a commentary. Right. On how men treat women. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Partially. But that's all I have to say about Picnic. I'm good if you're Love. good. Well, we're going to move into a segment because this show is all about desire. And Will and my three-year anniversary is coming up on Wednesday. Thank you so much. I know it's been a journey. It's We've been in together uh seven years in august yeah yeah so you know we've been together kind of a long time and i was going through some old photos the other day i was trying to clean out my google drive it was an emotional journey um but i found this one folder because i'm a psycho when we first yeah i was gonna say i was like i was like i was like you're the one who saved these yeah screenshots okay there's (laughs) 540 screenshots oh Oh my gosh, that's so many. I know, I'm insane. That's multiple times a day for over a year. Yeah. Um of well, that's texts not true. that Will would send me that I thought were cute or sweet. Um Well, good for you, Will, for honestly sending that many cute and sweet right. text messages. Or like moments I wanted to remember, feelings I wanted to remember. <laughs> Um, so it was, it's a very young something, love desire. Yeah. Something that like you could like dramatically delete if we had ever broken up. And yeah. Like, well, I'm like, gonna throw I'm gonna, this folder. And go 500 times over. Um, blah, 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 blah. but I just thought because this play deals with first love, uh, those kind of romantic energy feelings that it'd oh be fun God. if we did dramatic readings of paragraph text from Will. Um, so, Will, I'm going to ask you to read this first one. Okay. It is from before we were dating, the summer we were talking. I think it was in the first couple weeks of us talking. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, and, I'm going to say uh, what his name was in my phone for each of these. Right now, oh. it is just Will. And it's 1236 a.m. A.m. that he's sending this. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Late night energy. Late night energy. Hey, can I just say something? Well, too bad. I'm going to say it anyway. I normally hate talking on the phone, but I th- like I think it's stupid and awkward. Such a millennial. But I always look forward to our phone conversations. I-, I know there's only been like three, but they've been three really good ones. And whenever I hang up, I just think about the next time I get to talk to you. There. I said it. Good night, Sarah. <laughs> Smiley face. Oh my god, that was perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, good. Um, Is that how you would read it? Yeah. <laughs> well, that was like your first like ever time, like kind of telling that me f- that you you liked me a little mm. bit. Like you told me like you missed me or something, but it was like kind of a romantic like, beginning. Like, hey, can I just say something? Hey, can I just say something? Too bad. Too bad. I'm say it anyway. And I was like, all right, <laughs> go off. Okay. Okay. Um, you just send me this. <laughs> so I no, I mean, like I was like deeply obsessed with you at this time so it meant everything to me what changed <laughs> so much no i'm just kidding oh. no i'm just kidding um it, oh it was my God. so so we're moving on to a different point this isn't a low point of our beginning of our relationship apparently I, apparently i couldn't even tell you what this is about i i really don't know i probably was like You said something a little wrong, and I was probably being dramatic about it and refused Mm. to talk to you. And this was probably one of the first times I refused to talk to you. Interesting. Um, Your name in my phone, there's this really weird symbol that's, like, red. and It's like a lotus tile. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And that was our sign of, like, I'm here. Um, Yeah, so we would text that to each other. We text that. So it has, like, that lotus sign. It says Wills. I named him that because Prince William, uh, Kate would call him Wills in the movie Will and Kate. So, in my phone. There's a movie called Will and Kate? Oh my gosh, it's a Lifetime movie. It's incredible. Oh, please. Um, and then it has another lotus sign. So, William, um, I'm going to have to scroll a little bit to make it to the next picture. Okay. 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 So. Do I get to read this one? Okay. You get to read this one. You, you read all of it. It means oh, okay. more in yeah, your voice. Yeah, for sure. Good morning. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. I'm an idiot. Probably the biggest idiot ever. I, I can't even describe how I feel right now. It, it's like I'm numb. I'm so tired of making these kind of mistakes. And I don't 
want them to happen, but they just keep happening, and I, and I hate it. I love you, Sarah, and I don't want anyone else in my life, just you. I know this text is going to do very little to change what happened last night. It probably won't do anything. I love you, Sarah. I'll see you at 1.30. <laughs> And then I think what? My the what? favorite part is I'll see you at one thirty. See you at one thirty. <laughs> what were what were we doing? Like uh... I have no. <gasps> you know what that probably was when I got super drunk. No, we was got it stuck the... in the mud. I think it was because that I is when a game I, would end. The this yeah the the stuck in the mud thing. Yeah, that was like our first fight. I mean, <sighs> yeah, it was rough. Yeah, that was really it was a terrible night for everybody involved. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was terrible. But that was only in this. That was in the fall. Mm-hmm. I think that was in the spring. No, it was the fall. Oh. I know it was early. That was a dramatic fall. That I'll was terrible. What. Um, I'll read this one. This is this is a little. It's sweet. It's it's a little like I I said, you used to send good night texts. Dot dot dot. I'm, oh. I'm fishing. I'm wanting. Yeah. I'm wanting a little like, bit of attention. Probably, I probably was like, "Well, you used to send good night texts." Uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, and then you say, "You're right." Dot dot dot. I did. I guess I forgot these past couple nights. Dot dot dot. I love you, Sarah. And I'm thinking a lot about what you said. I want to make you all better, but I'm not really sure I know how, and maybe I can't. Maybe this is a you thing. Whoa. Just know that I will always love you and stand by you. Good night, princess. I called you, um, pri- I called you it, princess it a wasn't, lot. Yeah, it wasn't like was a, a bad... Was, Sarah was, means princess, so it wasn't like a... Yeah. Yeah, good night, princess. You know? Oh. Yeah, yeah. no. Um, but yeah, maybe this is a you thing is a little bit of a toxic energy. Maybe this is a you thing. <laughs> Whoa. That's pretty rough, Will. Yeah. Um, maybe this is a you thing. Yeah. We're obsessed. It's not Yeesh. a great look. Not a great look. Yeah. Not a great look, but it's seven years I ago. Can't really so speak can my, <laughs> I can't really speak for my former self, unfortunately. Oh, that's great. Um, oh. I think that... Oh, this is the last one. Uh, thank you guys for bearing with us. I think this is hilarious. It's just fun to make fun of ourselves in our young puppy love stage because we're so, like, different now. Like, you'll be like, I love you. And I'm like, eh, whatever. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> like... And it, which is like beautiful, you know, you, when you're with someone so long, you trust that. And it's not like this insecure puppy love energy, but it's hilarious to see what we were like during yeah, this time is, to me. Yeah, it is. Okay. Okay, this is the last one. Okay. Right now it is 4.26 a.m. and Anthony and I are going to bed. <laughs> I am beyond tired, but it has been an excellent night of bro memories and a little drinking, just all around merriment. I love you very much, and I wish that you could be here because I love you more than all of the chocolate pancakes in the world, even if they had whipped topping. You're the best thing about me, and that will not ever change. And you still say, I love you more than pancakes. I love saying I love you more than pancakes. (laughs) I think mostly because it annoys you, I don't know. Yeah. Well, every time, he'll just be like, it'll be such a sweet moment, and then he'll just be like... I love you more than pancakes. And I'm like, you don't even love them that I much. I hope like, you would. <laughs> yeah. Um, unless we're like in Belgium, then I'll be like, whoa, you must whoa. Love, me a, love me a lot. Yeah. Um, but those were waffles. So that ends this week's segment of Will's text. Oh, we're going to do this like every time no, now? No, 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 no. Maybe just when it fits, you okay, know? Okay, okay. Or maybe it's a, a love time. Oh, yeah, maybe like, us. well, I mean, at the same time, we got plenty to go through. We got 544 <laughs> to go through. But so. not all of them are paragraphs, you know? Oh. Some, of, some them. of them are just like, hey, what's up? No, some of them like are, hey, you're beautiful. Do you know that? Oh, okay. like, yeah. Oh, so you kind of, you got a little, you got a little everyday text. Yeah. Also, I have some, like, Pinterest photos that just, like, reminded me of you or something. I think it's hilarious something. that you can go back through your phone. Like, I've never deleted our our text conversation. So, yeah. I'm like, I, who knows how many gigabytes it's taking up on my phone, on my iCloud or whatever. Well, I know, but, like. But, like, it's just. I don't in, know if you can scroll. Can you keep can scrolling? You, yeah, you can scroll for, for, I can scroll for forever on yours. Dang. Yeah, it's crazy. Wow. Yeah, I would love to. I wonder Sarah how, I, had some, I mean, she was psycho. I don't even know who I was our first year of our relationship, really. Just this crazy girl who was like, I love you so much. Why don't you love me? And you're like, I, I do. I do. Like, relax. <laughs> I'm like, no, you don't. <laughs> yeah. I don't, like... I don't believe you. I don't know what happened to me in my youth, but I, I needed a lot of attention. 
Uh, still do. Yeah. Uh. Um, that hasn't changed. But yeah, no, that was great. So puppy love, it's a it's a theme. That's a puppy love. Love. That's okay. the tie-in. Well, are we ready to cast the freaking play? We are ready to cast the freaking play. Cast the freaking play. All right. So let's start with, how about Mrs. Potts? She's kind of a minor character. She's not actually in it that much. Yeah. She is, she's, anyway, Mrs. Potts. She's the neighbor. Who you got for Mrs. Potts? Catherine Hahn. Catherine Hahn. Good, good. I think she's a little, supposed to be a little bit older. But we can age her up. Okay. Yeah. I was wondering if she's supposed to be around the same age as the mom or. She's, well, she does have an, she, her elderly mom lives with them, what lives with her still. So she's, like, she's not that old. Yeah. yeah. But her, her mom is like incapacitated. Like she can't get uh, out of bed. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Know? So she's like near death perhaps. Yeah. Anyway. Um, I like Catherine Hahn. Thank you. I do. I do. She might even make a good flow actually. Yeah, my flow, I feel a little nervous, so we'll see. My Mrs. Potts is Frances McDormand. That's great. We're okay. going with her. Oh, I yeah. love her. I, yeah. I, I, she's great. Yeah. Okay, Perfect. great. Perfect. Next right. character. Uh, Howard? Howard. Okay, so I chose someone. Um, his name is Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Okay. And you would recognize him from Grey's Anatomy. Okay. He played, oh my gosh, Denny. Duquette, who which was Izzy's like guy who was like dying, but she was in love with. But it's just this guy. Uh, he's a handsome. He's a handsome man. He's handsome, but you could, you could grunge him up, and you'd believe that he would say gross things a little bit. Okay. You know. Okay. That's kind of what I was looking for. Solid. Yeah. I went for more of the creepy vibe. That's kind of like kind of like oh, I believe that this guy's single in his forties. Mm. You know. Give it to me. Paul Dano. But he's like. He's thirty-seven. He looks so young. Yeah, true. True. I think I'm going to have to go with Jeffrey. Okay. I'm sorry. I don't Sounds think good. he's old enough yet. Um. Okay, Rosemary. Well, I put my Howard and Rosemary together because they're, da- they're partners in real life. So Zoe Kazan as Rosemary. Interesting. I chose Brie Larson. Whoa. I yeah. think she's too. Ooh, that's tough. You'd believe That's, she's a spinster. Really? I think. It's Zoe Kazan is so I, cute. I have a hard time seeing like Brie Larson being like being like, I'm gonna I oh I'm desperate for a man. I need a man right now and I'm gonna okay. marry Howard. Oh I get that. Let's go with Zoe. Okay. I see that energy that you're saying. Okay. Okay. Alan. Alan. Uh I forget who this guy is, but I chose Asa Butterfield, who I don't remember who that is. Nice. So I'm going to look him up. He's British? My guy's British. No way. Asa is, what is he in? Oh, he's in the Boy in the Striped Pajamas. Oh, he's currently in Sex guy. Education. Yeah, yeah. He's in Merlin. He's in okay. 50 States of Fright. Um, oh, he's in Ender's Game. Yeah. No, I know who you're talking about. Okay. I don't think I've ever actually seen him in anything, so. Oh. He's got kind Sex of a, Education. Oh, okay. Um, I chose tom holland yeah he was he i i I was thinking about him yeah i think he's good sick let's go tom and i just like you gotta get spider-man in there you got somehow you gotta represent marvel somehow yeah (laughs) okay um Flo. Flo, the mom so your oh wait who's yours so i did angelina jolie whoa (laughs) what a power move i know I wasn't feeling crazy. super great, but I was also like, hell it yeah. Let's just, <laughs> just get this A-lister, like, crazy, like, like. like what has she been in? What is she, <laughs> she's getting, she's wait, from, like, like, a small town in Kansas, right? Yeah. <laughs> you could grunge her up. Interesting. If she has the hottest daughter in town, she has to be a little hot. Not necessarily. But? But I'm going that direction. Okay. That's a very that's a, that's a strong choice. <laughs> it's that's strong. Certainly a choice. Yeah. I have Melissa McCarthy, so total opposite. <laughs> total opposite. Angelina Jolie. Oh, no. oh man. Or do we put Catherine Hahn? It's tough because like a young Angelina Jolie would have been an would have been incredible match. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or do we do Catherine Hahn? Catherine Hahn could be good. I I like my Melissa McCarthy. I feel like we, you've tried to cast Melissa McCarthy like too many times. Uh, really? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I didn't remember that. 
Um, uh, uh, yeah, let's do Catherine Hahn. All right. All right. That's, nobody wins. Nobody wins. Nobody wins That's there. That's fair. Um, okay, Millie. Okay, so I chose this girl named Sophia Lillis. Okay. Um, so this is what she looks like. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And the show she is on, oh, I forget what it's called. It's called I'm Not Okay With This. And she's actually, like, very good. She's very kind of, like, um, you know, tomboy. Yeah, she's a definite tomboy look. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. I chose Sadie Sink, who plays Max on Stranger Things, the red-haired girl. Okay, that's yeah. very interesting. Yeah. I like that. When she I plays like- a tomboy there, so I'm just, like, kind of casting her as a tomboy again. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah, she's cute, too. Let's go her. Okay, Sadie Sink. Okay. Um, Hal. Hal. Gosh, I don't it know who this so guy hard. is. I this was really hard cuz like I was like I need I really wanted to go like really young, you know, I didn't want to go like a 30-year-old playing him. So I chose somebody somebody really weird. He's Australian. Oh, he's not that weird. Never mind. Um he I, I chose Jacob Alordi who is uh in the kissing booth. He's like the, the main guy in kissing. Yes, booth. yes, yes. And he's in Euphoria. As he's well. also in Euphoria. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's that's good. He's got some hot boy energy. He's like giant. He's yeah, like, he's how, huge. He's six five, which is so tall. That's insane. Yeah. Um, I chose. He has to beef up. Fup. Beef. Up. Oh oh. <laughs> I, oh. Fup. <laughs> I was like, he has to beef up. <laughs> what I I don't know I don't know what you kids are saying nowadays, but that doesn't sound good. Beef up. I'm gonna um, give. Um, can I guess? Yeah. Timothy Chalamet. No. Uh, <laughs> Ansel Elgort. He's good too. He was he. I almost chose him. Yeah. If yeah. he like was just like a little more, you know. Yeah. Which one would you choose? If Jacob Elordi was only six feet tall, I'd be like yes. I know, but he so he would tall. be very good. He would be. And maybe the maybe the height would be to his advantage. I don't know. This is tough. This is really tough. Should we do our match? Okay. 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 And then we'll come back. Um. So I chose, which is funny, from Stranger Things, Maya Hawk for Madge. Is she okay? Is she is she is she Barb? No, not Barb. No. Is she the sister, or is no, she? No, I hate she, her. Is She's she the, the, Is she uh, in third season? Season three, yeah. Yeah. Okay. She's great, great. Uma great. Thurman's daughter. Uma Thurman's. Oh, Ethan Hawke's daughter. Yeah. Uma Thurman's daughter. Yeah, she's good. She would be good. Yeah, because you believe like she'd want something more, but also like she's very beautiful. Yeah. Who did you choose? I choose. I ch- I choose. Uh, I chose Abigail Breslin. Um, who was you. Little Miss Sunshine no. and Little Miss Sunshine and the, the daughter in Zombieland and you thought her not the the daughter no the, the younger sister in Zombieland, but like I don't, I don't know. know if I've ever not that it, she's not like very beautiful but I've never been like wow she's really hot okay great have you thought she's really hot I, I had a really no I had a really hard time finding <laughs> a match um. Yeah. I would almost choose Nancy from Stranger Things more than Maya Hawk. I don't like Nancy at all. Sure. I wouldn't get, oh, let's go with Maya. Thank you. Great. Um now which How boy? tall is my how tall is Maya Hawk? And then this this will could be, be the deciding factor. factor. If she's like five three Not that we're against people being if, but if she's five three she's, oh, she's five nine. Oh, that's good. That's great. We'll do yours. Yes. We'll do yours. Yes. Okay. Love. All right. Well, well, we have what are our we, three questions. We got three questions. Oh, well, well what, 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 what are you watching right now? What am I watching? So we are or actually um, starting up on Ozark again. Uh, season three. Season three. Very, we took a good. long hiatus, and that has been absolutely incredible. Um, I've also been watching baking shows because I love them, especially during the summertime slash when I work out. It's weird. And then, as far as podcasts go, I'm still listening to Crime Junkie. Um, oh, we did. We listened to this one called Chameleon. Yeah, we listened. To, yeah, and that was it's very kinda, good. Yeah, it's a mini series. Um, 
kind of not really a, I guess kind of a true crime but it's not like it's more like a white collar true crime kind of thing right very like about con artists yeah it's cool it is really good and um we were on a podcast too we it we we is um I don't know if it's up it's yet. not up yet so we'll release that so we kind of we recorded that with um this podcast that was written by or that's done by Tim Webker who is a teacher at St. James but he it's called um seemingly ordinary seemingly ordinary it's up on spotify and wherever you get your podcasts yeah and it's just about he just interviews people about their lives and basically uh it's kind of cool where everyone has like different unique talents and like specialties obviously yeah. so he'll he just kind of focuses on that and honestly his interview questions were like so good he, yeah he, yeah he, he has some hard hitters in there will and i we like got the email for like our questions and we're like oh my gosh we do our podcast so wrong this is I, incredible <laughs> <laughs> I, I like had to prepare a question or yeah. answer. So I was like, dang. Dang, this is rough. Um, but it was really fun oh, and really good. Cool. So we'll make sure to upload that and promote that when our episode comes out. Yep. Um, what are you watching? I'm watching Queen's Gambit. I'm enjoying it for the most part. Um, I'm a little behind, obviously, because I was everybody was obsessed with that in the fall, I guess. Um, you know, I'm for the most part I'm like, this is pretty good. <gasps> um, and then I've watched uh, you know, I've watched some of the new movies that have been streaming. Um, you know, like Army of the Dead and um, that one other, gorilla In movie. the Heights. Oh, In the Heights. Yeah, that was Yeah, great. that was good. That was good. We also, oh, I also watched I May Destroy You, which is incredible oh, by yeah. Michaela Cole on HBO. Watch it. It's so good. Cool. It really, yeah. And she's like, it, it's just one of those shows where she's the writer and the actor and helped direct, you know, it's just like the total creator. So you're really seeing inside her brain. It's powerful. Yeah. Oh, I wanted to say one thing <clears throat> more about Picnic before I forget. There is a movie version you're of cut Picnic. Off. I'm just kidding. Yeah. There is a movie version of Picnic mm-hmm. where it was in like the 50s. Yeah. Um, and Hal is like played by a super old guy and stuff. And I don't think it really works. I've never really seen it, but whatever. Is Paul but Newman in it? As Paul Hal? Newman was in the. He was Paul in Newman Broadway. Was, went, was on on Broadway as Alan. No, he was as Alan, and he understudied and then took over for Hal. Oh. So I was wondering if he... No, I don't think he's in the movie. Okay. got it. Um, but I was about to say that I think Picnic is ripe for a, another movie version. Oh, yeah. I think, like, Netflix would be really smart to just, like, hey, let's just do this. Let's, and let's just go. go. Let's film it in, like, three weeks. Let's go. Yeah. You know? I think That'd they'd be, awesome. be really smart to do that. Netflix, if you're listening. Yeah. That's another idea. Come on. It's um, probably... Yeah, anyway. Okay, so next question is... What's your crush? No, do you feel hot today? Do I feel hot today? Um, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, today's been like a good day. Like, I don't know. Yesterday was kind of a weird day, and then it was a fun night, and then today I feel a lot better, and we're kind of exploring more and just kind of like doing the day how we want, and that's yeah. been like really nice. Yeah. So, yeah. Good. I'm glad. You feel hot today? I feel pretty hot today. (laughs) I feel I'm having myself a real hot boy summer. And And that is the fourth time we've heard that. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's the tally. Love it. Um, But you are. You're living your best. Like Will during summer, we call him Summer Will, and he's like absolutely incredible. Not that we don't love Will year round, but there's a different more spon- version. More spontaneous. I'm He's just chill. Like, I'm like, hey, can we go to this one store? And it's not met with like a, I don't know, full of time. It's met with a like, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. What else am I doing? <laughs> I'm like, great. <laughs> I love it. All right. Okay. What are, I always forget our crush. What's your crush? What's my crush? Oh, no. My crush is Christmas lights in our bedroom. That is okay. my crush. That's a good crush. They provide a nice glow. Will makes fun of me. I'm sure everyone will judge me who has any taste at all in design. Mm. But I love Christmas lights. I know they're very much a dorm room vibe, but like they make me feel so safe. And it's so it's such like nice warm lighting and I will have them till I die in my bedroom. And I'm sorry that's what you signed up for. Great. Great. What's I'm, your I'm crush? For you. Sticky rice. And Hawaiian, yes. Hawaiian bros. Hawaiian bros. So good. Our dad, we took, uh, we went out with my dad earlier for lunch and Scotty, and we explored Hawaiian bros for the first time, and it was so good. Like, it was, we had teriyaki chicken, pineapple, and rice, and Will had a mac and cheese, and it was just, like, delicious. Yeah, it's really good. Get out there. Get out Find there. It. Explore it. Get it. Um, and, are you mad at me? 
Am I mad at you? No, I'm not mad at you. Good. Yeah. Are you mad at me? No. Nah, no. I love. I had a pretty good time. <laughs> pretty good. There's something in my eye right now, so I'm like weeping. Oh, no. <laughs> no. I don't really know what it is. I also feel like we're missing a question. No, that's all. That's three. No, because what are you watching is not part of it. What's your crush? Do you feel hot today? Are you mad at me? All right. You, right? You proved right? me wrong. Okay. You're right. I was like, right, I was like right. am I going crazy? <laughs> no, I mean, I am. Um. <laughs> so, guys, thank you so much for like, I know we're kind of like off and on. It's just like kind of been a crazy time in our life. And I will say it's kind of exciting. Like, we've been doing this for over a year. Yeah, it's Granted, true. it's very kind of getting sparingly a very little sporadic, bit. sporadic, but, but hey, we like doing it. Thanks for listening. Yeah, thanks for listening. Thanks for making this like possible and you know it's nice when like friends still excited about it and want to be on it and like that just kind of keeps us going and um so thank you so remember to like like and subscribe and comment and And just share with your friends who like theater and podcasts it's just it just means so much to us and we just love sharing like our love of theater and with each other and with you guys and if you have any suggestions seriously like just dm us and like you'll be on the episode it's really not that hard we're not yeah uh, we want picky. people to come on. <laughs> yeah. I'm so tired of talking to us. Well, I'm just oh, kidding. my gosh. That's terrible. I know. Um, no, I love it. Love it, too. So, yeah. yeah. So keep an eye out June 30th this week, our three-year anniversary. So, I don't know. <laughs> keep an eye out, everybody. <laughs> Send us. We're going to be painting the town red. <laughs> We're losing our minds at a Japanese restaurant. Um, But, yeah. Great. Great. Well, well we love until you. Until next time. We love you. And... Good night.